At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the break room products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. At Staples Business Advantage, we help you select from 2,000 break room products, so you can be sure there's something for everyone. Yum. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. G'day and welcome back to Shares for Beginners. I'm Phil Muscatello. Listeners to this podcast will be aware that I normally discuss topics of a general nature only with my guests. We don't talk about market conditions as they're happening. However, I know there's a lot of fear and emotional turmoil going on at the moment, so let's pour some oil on troubled waters. I've asked Tony Kynaston from the QAV podcast to come back on so that we could allay some of those fears. Hi, Tony. Hi, Phil. How are you? <laughs> I know you're not a fearful at the moment at all. I'm not, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I emailed Tony yesterday and mentioned difficult times, and he emailed back saying, situation normal, hence the name of this episode. <laughs> There's also a few moments at the end of this podcast from Rob Gilmore about the oil price situation because it's not all about the coronavirus. You may remember Rob as the first guest ever on this podcast. He dropped around this morning to give us insights into the oil price, why it's volatile and why it has an effect on markets. So we're recording this on Wednesday, March 11 at 10am. The markets are just open. We're having, not having a look at this before that at this stage? No. No, 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 no. You don't look at it that often. I anyway. don't. No, 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 no. I guess at this t- sort of time I look at it maybe... Two or three times a week, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So on Monday, the ASX 200, the top 200 shares on the Australian Stock Exchange dropped 7.33%. That was after it had dropped around 13% in the previous two weeks. The moves on the New York Stock Exchange have been similar. Yesterday, the ASX 200 closed up about 3% after opening 3.8% lower. Overnight, the US is up nearly 5%. These gyrations are quite funky and wild, yet, Tony, you remain sanguine. Why? Well, I think uh, what's happening with the markets going up and down at the moment in particular is people are reacting to stimulus, to what our leaders are saying, what's uh, happening with latest reports of spread of coronavirus. So they're reacting to news. Uh, And we can't lose sight of the fact that the share market is a market. It's, It's people trading with people. And therefore, it's subject to human psychology, which is the study of behaviour. And we need to have a framework to deal with that uh, and a framework which says, this is how I approach investing. I'm buying shares in companies. And yes, they're traded on the market. And yes, it's subject to psychology. So I have to have that framework operating in that kind of real environment. But I can't be blindsided by that, by human psychology. And I think that's what's happening in the market at the moment is, is people are, I guess because the news tends to focus on share markets at this time, it's becoming top of mind and people's awareness. It's a bit like we've all worked in offices where there's one person who always begins a conversation with, have you heard the latest? (laughs) (laughs) And that kind of person is kind of dominating the market at the moment. And we need to be polite to that person, but we need to basically ignore them. Um, There will be times when there's uh, big falls And we have to decide whether we're a buyer or seller and there'll be times when there's big rises and we have to decide whether we're we're a buyer or a seller. But that's part of being an investor. And before the podcast, we were talking about Warren Buffett and one of his quotes is, we need to be fearful when people are greedy and greedy when people are fearful. Now, we had the fearful when people are greedy activity last year and now we're having the greedy when people are fearful type event this year. I'm not saying that uh, people should be buying into the market at the moment, but they should have an idea of what will be a situation when they'll buy into the market. And and I have a framework, and and I guess uh, I need to put a caveat around what I'm talking about here. I'm not trying to give people advice. I'm trying to tell people what I do, and that's different, I think. Whether you follow me or not Mm -hmm. um, is, is up to you. And what we're all about on our podcast, the QAV podcast, is to teach people how to think for themselves and, and to deal with markets. And I have a framework, and the framework is to you know look for, um, look for the quality companies and look for them when they're at value. And uh, at the moment, there are lots and lots of, of companies in that situation. But what we're doing as well is I'm, I'm waiting for 
the sentiment uh, around those companies to start to turn. And that might not be, it might be tomorrow, it might be in six months' time, it might be in 12 months' time, but uh, that's that's what I'm looking for. And we talk about what we call a three-point trend line graph. Uh, some people talk about moving averages. So basically it's when the short-term sentiment in the market overtakes the long-term sentiment in the market. And when we see that starting to happen, then we'll, we'll be a buyer in this market. But there are plenty of opportunities to, uh, to buy. So what would you say to someone at the moment? Uh, I mean, it's a psychological thing. And um, because of all the headlines and because of all the media making a big deal about it and Italy's in lockdown. And- if you're new to the market and you're not sure what's going on, this is probably a learning experience for you because this kind of corrections happens every six or seven years. It's basically once a cycle event in the share market. So get used to it. As we said before, situation normal, these things happen. Uh, I think the last one happened, I think there was a 10 to 20% correction in about December 2018. So, so don't panic, I guess, is the message. By the same token, if you're scratching your head saying, okay, I can be calm during this process, but I don't know what to do, then I would be uh, hesitant to start you know, trying to guess and trying to, to put money into the market if you really don't know what you're doing. This may well, the learning point in this whole process for a new share investor may be, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a stomach for this. I'm going to go and buy a, a listed investment company or an ETF or put my money in an industry super fund or, or a low fee fund. I think that's a very legitimate um, takeout to have from this, this the last two weeks in the market. And I think that's a very smart thing to do if you're feeling at all squeamish or at sea or not confident with what you're doing. Uh, you can you can certainly keep learning and and maybe even running a paper portfolio during this process and see how you went and and that's part of the learning process. But if you are aren't certain, you know, don't don't take a risk. Put the money into a into a, a fund. Okay, because this has been a very recent event. I mean, people might have been buying an ETF three weeks ago. Yeah, and this is they've this is the first time they've been hit with it. So it's just a learning experience, really, isn't it? Something to think about and really stick with it. Yes. Oh, exactly. I, I won't. I shouldn't think this would deter people from being in the share market. This is what I'm saying: is this happens. This is normal for a share market. But if you are feeling squeamish or unsure what to do, then maybe maybe direct investing isn't for you. Um, but uh, maybe it is in the future. And so you know, keep keep at it and and learn through this process. But I remember uh, the, I, I called the GFC my you know, my university course in in share investing. And before that, when I first started investing and did everything wrong, that was my my school of investing. So you always learn through these processes, um, and experience does does help and does give you the framework to keep calm. And uh, and Buffett, as we said before. Um, said you don't need an IQ of 150 to be a good share investor. You need to be calm and patient. And uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing at the moment. Another Buffett uh, saying is, Mr. Market is a manic depressive who knocks on your door every day and says, I want to buy your house and here's the price. <laughs> it's up to you whether it's up to you whether you sell or mm-hmm. or uh, or buy his house next door. He'll keep coming to you or she'll keep coming to you with a price. It's up to you whether you take that price. Did you enjoy his latest newsletter? That only came I loved out it. A couple of weeks ago, it was great, it. wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, I really recommend people go to the Berkshire Hathaway site. Yeah, very simple site. It's really just mm-hmm. a list of the past twenty years of newsletters, and and start to read them. They're, they're fantastic. And there's also actually I'll post it in the blog post for this episode. But there, he did an interview, a two hour interview with CBS. I think yes. a TV interview. Have yeah. you seen that? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, excellent interview, isn't yeah. it? You know, yeah. I mean, the guy's rock solid. Yes, he is so rock solid in the way he looks at uh, looks at things, yeah. and and you know he says I have a framework, I mm-hmm. have a way of doing things, and I wait for the market to to be in the right condition before I act. Mm-hmm. So w- no one can predict the future, but there's a lot of uh, talk about that Australia is going to go into a recession this year. Um, how would that does that have any effect? I guess it doesn't have any effect on the way that you think about things, or just changes the the time frame of your investing? No, it doesn't have any, any direct effect. And I guess I don't want to sound flippant. I mean, people will be hurt if there's a recession. People will be hurt in particular with the coronavirus um, mm-hmm. going through. People will die. Uh, so I don't want to sound flippant at all. These, yeah. are, these are very serious topics we're, we're talking with. But in terms of how they impact on how I invest, uh, they're just part of the general hurly-burly in the market. 
I, as I said before, I have a framework of looking at companies individually. Mm-hmm. I look at uh, their quality metrics and I look at their price and and decide whether it's they're at value or not. And then I, as a last sort of screen, I look to see what the market's doing and whether that company is in a, an upswing or a downswing before I decide to pull the trigger and buy. Um, that will be affected if we go into a recession. I expect that the list of companies I'm looking at will grow. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it, and it may mean I don't buy anything for six months or twelve months. Um, so be it. Uh, yep. I'll, I'll hang on to the ones I've got, and I'll wait for the right right time. I, I would add a word of caution here to anyone out there who's um, has a geared portfolio that they might want to consider um, reducing some of that gearing, especially if it's a margin loan when some of the shares can be at call. Yep, yep. Yeah. I don't think people have, re- have any idea of what a recession is like. I mean, you and I have <laughs> lived through several, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and and that's kind of a market, man- that's a mantra I have at the back of my mind when, when these kind of events uh, occur is that, you know, I've lived through the 91 recession, I've invested mm-hmm. through the Gulf Wars, mm-hmm. I've invested through uh, the... Uh, Dot com crash, the, the 98 long term capital management meltdown, the Asian financial crisis, uh, the GFC, all of these things you survive. And if you, if you take the longer term view and look at the share market over a hundred years, the graph starts in the bottom left hand side of the, of the share, of the piece of paper and it goes to the top right hand side of the piece of paper. Mm. It will always do that over a longer term. And we just have to keep that. Um, uppermost in our minds. Yeah. I'm talking to my daughter at the moment because she hasn't started investing yet and um, she's got no idea, doesn't want to do it. She just wants to spend money and have a great time. She's at that age. and um, so, But I tell her that, okay, there's there's um, apps that are available these days which can help her get started in investing, like Raise. Have you heard of Raise? I haven't, no. Oh, anyway, what it does too, is... Too old. <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically, it just rounds up every purchase on your cards oh, yes. and right. that gets invested. And mm-hmm. I'm saying to her, look, this is a great time to get started. When markets are down, you're dollar cost averaging in, basically. Yes. You're getting in at the best possible time. Yeah. Um, is this the way that you would see someone first starting in the market right now? Absolutely. I think it's a great time to start in the market. Provide- in any way, any way possible, yeah. Provided you can stomach it going further down. Mm-hmm. Um, and one way to, to help that process, as you say, is dollar cost average. So if you've been dollar cost averaging into the market uh, over the last 12 months, for example, uh, you've been buying less shares in the last 12 months and now you're buying more shares and so overall you're going to get a um, a decent performance. And you're not really worried about where the share market is. All you're trying to do is work out whether I'm buying more or less for my the same number of dollars every month. And I'm in the same boat. I have a 20-year-old daughter who's um, asking me is it a good time to start. So we are starting with her at the moment. Yeah. yeah, perhaps we, we should explain what dollar cost averaging is here at this point. Sure. So if someone, say, for example, came to me today and said, I've just inherited $100,000, what do I do with it? Uh, the last thing I'd say to them is go and you know, put, put it all into the market tomorrow. I would say, for example, maybe uh, take $10,000 a month for the next 10 months and every month spend $10,000 buying into the market. And it's easier if you're buying an ETF or a listed investment company or putting it into a managed fund. You just keep putting $10,000 in each month. Uh, but what that means is that at the moment, your $10,000 goes 20% further than if you were doing it last year, uh, where you were buying uh, less with that $10,000. But over time, uh, it evens out and you're buying the market average. At Staples Business Advantage, nothing can top the smarts and instincts of the thousands of experts on our team. While AI excels at processing data, automating tasks, and providing insights for better decision making. And when they're used together, they're they are far, far more, more powerful, powerful than, than either, either is, is alone. alone. Whoa. Whoa. I've never felt more alive. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make business easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. You're listening to Tony Kynaston. Tony is a multimillionaire professional investor. Thanks to the checklist system he's developed called QAV, Quality at Value, the average return on his portfolio over the last 20 years has been nearly 20% per annum. That's twice the return of the ASX 200. Tony's knowledge and calm analysis takes the guesswork out of share market investing. And best of all, it removes the trauma. Fast track your investing knowledge. Use the coupon code SFB for a 20% discount on monthly or annual plans. That's at qavpodcast.com.au. This might be the best investment you'll ever make. That's qavpodcast.com.au. 
and use the coupon code SFB for that 20% discount. So if you've been holding off buying and you've got some cash, is it now something a time that people should start thinking about it? Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, the market's down 20% uh, mm-hmm. from its highs. Uh, it may go down further, so, so you know, you, I would be, use be dollar, prepared. Yeah. I would use dollar cost averaging to start buying, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, this is the sort of time where I start going around looking at how much undrawn for, you know, facilities I have in terms of debt, and whether I have any cash that uh, I can pull together and start to put into the market. The coronavirus. How fearful are you of the coronavirus? Well, I'm fearful of catching it myself because I'm yeah. probably starting to get into the danger zone <laughs> <laughs> personally. Uh, and as I said before, I don't want to be flippant. People will die yeah. uh, from the virus. Um, on, on a macro scale, an economic scale, it will disrupt supply chains. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I sort of go through the risks of what could happen, I'm going to I'm going to say them as risks. That, yeah, but they may not happen. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah, you know, the old management saying of um, hope for the best but plan for the worst is a good one to keep in mind at this time. Mm-hmm. But as you said before, we haven't seen a recession since 1991, and it's we haven't seen what's called a supply side recession for much longer than that. So a supply side recession means that. People can't get access to goods. So, for example, a builder can't uh, get access to Hardy Plank or something like that that they used to build the house with. And that that has two problems. One, it means the house doesn't get built, so there's less money going into the economy and the builder has to put their, their labourers off. But two, it also means that uh, there'll be someone out there who can produce Hardy Plank in a limited sort of uh, amount, uh, but the price will go up. And so we start to see inflation come back into the market. And so the, the risk I see with uh, with coronavirus around the world is that uh, people start having to pay more for what they could buy cheaply, either from China or from or from somewhere else. That starts a, a round of inflation, and that's always bad for share markets because um, all the prices are going up. That means wages will have to follow to to pay for things, uh, which means uh, all the costs in the economy go up, and that's a drag on business and a drag on the sh- on the share market. And it's also tougher for people because they're suddenly having to battle. Uh, having to ask for more money and, and battle with the budget to try and afford gr- everyday items, groceries and, and uh, clothing and things like that. You must be the only person that sees inflation as a risk at this stage. <laughs> 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 well, I'm talking about real inflation. I mean, we've been, I've lived through periods when inflation has been running at um, you know high single digits mm-hmm. and, and that's that's a pretty tough time. Uh, yeah. to, to be to be an investor and just to to, to really just get about in the economy, really. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, because um, yeah, everyone else, every pundit that I hear is saying that we're going to be having low interest rates for a long, long time. I'm a bit of a contrarian, Phil. When everyone yeah. says one thing, I expect <laughs> I expect the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because no one can see the future, and when no, there's no, a, no. when there's a consensus in the market, it usually means it's already happened, and we're we're about to turn a corner. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the other side of it, um, the, the problems at the moment is to do with the oil price as well. Mm. It's not just, and we're going to have uh, Rob Gilmore, as I mentioned, a bit later on, just giving a little brief mm. overview of that. But um, how do you see the oil price situation as it is developed at the moment? Oh, I'll give you my opinion, and that's all. It's, it's you know, yeah. it's worth two cents, really. I have my two cents. I did used to work for the Shell Oil Company, so I have a little bit of experience in the in the oil world, but not much. Um, to be able to shed any sort of certainty on what's going to happen. I guess the factors you need to consider are that uh, Saudi Arabia has just uh, launched Aramco, which is uh, probably the biggest oil company in the world now. Uh, it's seeing Russia as a, as a major competitor, so it's, it's, it's taking on Russia and, and doing some strange things to try and grow market share. Because um, Russia's economy, that's the main Money earner, Russia has. It's one of the big it? ones, yeah. Yeah, it's one yeah, of the big definitely. ones. Yeah. Um, their energy, oil, gas, and yeah, so forth. Yeah, that's right. So I can see tussles going on between Russia and the Ramco, uh, which is driving the price down at the moment. I don't, I don't know when that will shake out. Uh, it'll be a game of bluff and, and who blinks first, I think. Uh, I think the more important thing, though, for the global economy is that if you are a, an oil company and you have lots of debt, you're going to face a very tough time going forward. And I think it's the fallout of what happens to oil companies in the financial community, which is probably um, just as important or more important to us as investors because uh, there are some leveraged oil players out there, especially in the US. Lever- uh, leverage means that they've got some debt. They've yeah. got lots of debt, yeah. yeah. And so they, they're faced, uh, if they can't, if they're selling oil at a loss and, and at $30 a barrel, there'll be some out there who are, um, they will have to either refinance, uh, in, in which case that puts even more 
you know, stress on the company and drives their share prices down, uh, or or they uh, they'll go broke um, if they can't refinance. And then if they owe money to banks, and those banks face impairment losses and they become less profitable. And in this day and age, all the banks are very interconnected. So so banks realise that they shouldn't have uh, all their eggs in one basket, so they won't just just be solely loaning to the oil industry. They'll go off and and you know take it take out a. They'll, they'll, if they loan money to the oil industry, they'll probably go and borrow from some, another bank to try and offset that loan and, and and balance out their portfolio, which is the interconnected way that the financial markets work. And we're back where we were with the GFC, where you don't know if 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 oil company A goes down, which bank follows it, and which bank owes money to which other bank, and how that impacts back onto the banks in Australia, uh, and so. You've got this same sort of situation of, of unknown risk in the finance system, and, and that that will also see the cogs of the economy start to to grind to a halt. Was there anything in your notes that you wanted to say? Because um, all my questions are exhausted. <laughs> I, I my fears are allayed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think probably the, the 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 last thing I'd say is that um, it's 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 times like these when I like to watch and listen to people that I respect. Uh, because you know they don't again they don't give advice but they have conversations like this and people like I know you had Roger Montgomery on your show recently so yep. Roger Montgomery is one I listen to yeah I've been um, watching and reading a lot of his stuff he's yeah. very calm isn't he yes. very yeah very yeah. measured it's an, yes. yeah he's an excellent one to yeah to exactly follow. yep so, uh, yeah. Jeff Wilson from Wilson Asset Management Alan mm-hmm. Kohler and his weekly briefings and, and his podcast is good and obviously Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger when they they come out and speak as well it's always worth listening to. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you can feel quite isolated if you're an investor sitting at home by yourself. Uh, so having these people uh, talk to you, so to speak, even though you might read it, uh, it, it can be a good way of, of keeping you on track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Alan Kohler and the Money Cafe, it is, it's a great podcast. I mm. listen to every week as well, enjoying Thursday afternoons. I know they're competitors. We shouldn't talk too much about competitors, <laughs> but uh, they've got a nice light-hearted touch to yes. um, the way yeah. that they treat it, and you, yeah. that does help make you feel better as well. It does. I, I, don't see that. I don't see you as a competitor. I don't see them as a competitor no, or no, Roger's no. a competitor. <laughs> I, I think we're all on the same wavelength of trying to help people to uh, to learn about investing and to eventually break the shackles of paying so many fees for, for giving people their money. I think mm. that's probably the most important thing of, 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 of – that's the way I view what I do um, and that's probably the most important thing I can contribute. Uh, by all means, listen to this podcast, listen to our podcast, but please form your own opinion and, and work out what style suits you the best and work out whether you, you, know, you, have the, you have the temperament and the stomach for personal investing and if you do, great, and if you don't, work, you know, look, for, look for something with low fees. To invest your money, and 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 also too, um, the world goes on. This is we're all about investing to improve our quality of life. If it makes us, um, if it keeps us awake at night, and means that we can't enjoy our lives, it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> you know, we need to laugh through this whole process as well, and continue to enjoy our lives while we're trying to uh, trying to be good investors. Fantastic. Thank you very much for dropping in, Tony. All right. Good to see you, Phil. Uh, And we'll just uh, cut now to Rob Gilmore, who's going to give us his um, thoughts on oil prices and what's happening with oil at the moment as well. Well, it's not just the coronavirus, it's the oil price. And while the market's been trying to come to terms with the impact of the coronavirus outbreak for the last week and a half, unsuccessfully, mind you, it was almost like the market took a king hit last weekend when OPEC failed to come to an agreement with regards to production cuts. Now, we're going through a phase in the oil market where demand is dropping off because of the coronavirus and OPEC were trying to agree production cuts in order to curb supply while demand had fallen. Now, OPEC these days includes Russia, And Vladimir Putin decided not to cut production, trying to go against basically what Saudi Arabia were pushing. And the reason for that is because Vladimir wants um, US shale oil to go out of business. And he feels the best way to do that is to crash the oil price, which is below the cost of production of US shale oil, and to basically make them default on their debt and curb supply that way. 
during which time Russia uh, can gain market share and ultimately prices rise and they profit from it. So Saudi Arabia wasn't too happy with this and so they came to the party and said, right, well, if you're not going to cut supply, we're going to increase it and we're going to drop the price. So essentially what you've got now is a price war between the Russians and the Saudis. They both have very low costs of production, but how long they can sustain this sort of price war is is the big question. It's bad for share markets because any any shock causes uncertainty and volatility. When you see the price of a commodity like oil fall 30%, it has a dramatic impact on currencies. It has a dramatic impact on a lot of industries and a lot of industries that do depend on, on oil. And if you look at the ramifications of a low oil price just on the US shale industry alone, that has knock-on effects into credit markets. If they default on their debt, then uh, that causes further issues uh, in credit, which can potentially create some sort of contagion. If you take the US shale oil industry, there are parts of that industry where companies are heavily indebted. They've issued bonds. And if they default on those bonds, that then has issues, causes issues in, in credit markets. And if you think about other industries that feed off the oil industry in the US, like uh, employment, like the contractors, um, there are further ramifications in not only in the US, but other parts of the world when you see a dramatic fall in the oil price. It has a flow on effect to Australia through our gas producers where the price of gas is fixed to oil. So immediately your your product profitability of these companies uh, has been effectively decimated because the cost of what they're producing has just fallen by 30%. Shares for Beginners is for information and educational purposes only. It isn't financial advice and you shouldn't buy or sell any investments based on what you've heard here. Any opinion or commentary is the view of the speaker only, not Shares for Beginners. This podcast doesn't replace professional advice regarding your personal financial needs, circumstances or current situation. Thanks to Christopher Sulos for music production with that special Greekalicious flavour. Remember, music always flows, even when the money won't. At Staples Business Advantage, nothing can top the smarts and instincts of the thousands of experts on our team. While AI excels at processing data, automating tasks, and providing insights for better decision making. And when they're used together, they're they are far, far more, more powerful, powerful than, than either, either is, is alone. alone. Whoa. Whoa. I've never felt more alive. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make business easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.